morning. Um, so I'm a vendor. Uh, judging by Doug's earlier comments, I'm the Antichrist here, so forgive me for uh, turning up and, uh, and in a suit as well, so I guess that's even more of the Antichrist here as well. So my talk really is going to focus on trying to describe precisely what does it mean to go from just storing and hoarding data to getting to a point where we can actually harvest and have some information and insight. So about four years ago, there was a great Wall Street Journal article which uh, headlined with, uh, we had all the data, but we had no information or insight. And that was quite a telling tale because we've all collectively become data hoarders. We store a lot of information, we store a lot of data, but we haven't naturally been able to harvest insight from that data. So the point of reference really is here, is collectively, either as consumers or as uh, enterprises, we're generating a lot of data, but what are we, what are we actually doing with that data? There was some great research that was carried out by Dr. Richard Hackathorn, and he looked at this in terms of trying to understand where the latency exists within the various points in time when we actually store to actually make a decision against data. And on this graph here, on the time continuum here, you see an event occurring, a triggered event, and some action being taken. And the three dimensions of latency that we all encounter are data, analysis, and decision latency. Data latency, very, very quickly, is the time it takes you to take the raw information, store it, Apply any business rules. There's a variety of different technologies and products that are used to be able to store data. You may be using ETL processing, maybe some EAI, EII, MDM, God knows what else as well. So we do a lot of stuff before we physically store the data. The next thing we do is we have the analysis latency. Retrieve the, the data back, apply any business rules. And then thirdly, the decision latency. How much time does it physically cost us to ingest or make that decision based upon the event arriving? And the point is that the longer that we incur latency along each one of these three different dimensions, the less valuable the information becomes. So the goal really is, is to collapse along the axes all of these various points of latency, and of course that ultimately gives us greater value of that derived information. So the goal really is that across the spectrum of data, we need to reduce as much of that latency as possible. Now unfortunately what's happened over the generations of IT we've had a lot of technology debt that we've had to introduce because we've been dealing with point products, we've been dealing with uh, solutions that have been brought in to solve the problem of the day. We have to address that technology debt. But to do that, we need an end-to-end -end coverage model. So we start with ingestation, big data, storing it, processing it, and then visualizing it. And that has to be applicable across all types of data. We hear about zettabytes worth of data, 1,000 exabytes is a zettabyte, and we're storing and generating substantial amount of information. So we have to have this end-to-end -end coverage model. We have to have an equitable way of looking at this from point of inception to the point of visualization or, or finding, or, or harvesting rather. And in order to do this, we've got to make sure that we have that end-to-end -end coverage model. If we truly want to have a real-time decision-making process, what is it going to actually entitle us to do? If a business becomes real-time, what will they be able to do? And the elephant in the room, and this elephant is actually quite a graceful elephant, it tells us one thing. If we can actually achieve the goal of making data to become real-time on big data, it allows us to do, be able to do substantially more with that information and insight. So the most important thing is, it's not just to store it, it's to be able to harvest that information. And there are a variety of technologies. So for instance, today we look at storing everything before we analyze it, so after the event. And the storage process that we tend to in incur today is a very expensive one. So there are technologies like CEP technology, complex event processing, where you may not have to physically store all the data before you can start analyzing it. You may want to do it whilst data is arriving, ingest that big data, and do processing whilst it's in flight. But of course, the holy grail, of course, is, is to be able to predict the future. If you've ever visited India before, this chap here who's standing on the roadside here, before he makes a decision to walk across the road, he doesn't want five minutes worth of data, two minutes worth of data, or even 10 seconds worth of data. He could end up with a very nasty horizontal position if he's not careful. So the goal, of course, is that he has to be able to predict the future. Businesses need to predict the future. And in order to do this, we have to take a look at the end-to-end -end requirements that we have of processing data and being able to look at this from an extraction point and being able to know that decisions are going to be made that will have consequences. In order to make those consequences more palatable for the organizations that we serve, it's important that we start looking at the broader real-time requirements. So from an SAP point of view, this is my one unashamed sort of plug here. The one requirement that we have is we we've got to take a look at the broader requirements of data processing. If we look at real time, 
Real time implies that we have to play to the form factor of today, commodity hardware, being able to deal with large amounts of data, but do so in a way that's more constructive rather than just having to push data out to the side because it's too big to process and losing the context of that information. So our goal really is, is to provide more federated access, more native federated access across a wide variety of data, which could be transactional data, it could be analytical data,